college football on CBS College Sports is being brought to you by Icy Hot. It's icy to dull the pain, then hot to relax it away. By Direct TV. If you call yourself a sports fan, you've got to get Direct TV. And by Energizer Lithium. Keep going. Congratulations to homecoming king and queen, Gillum Bogle and Beth Ann Curry, your 2008 East Carolina University homecoming king and queen. It's 13-3 ECU at the half. We're joined now by East Carolina head coach Skip Holtz. Coach, we saw Patrick Pinkney at quarterback throughout the first half. Do you stay with Patrick in the second half, or, or do you rotate with Rob Casson? No, right now it's Patrick's game. It's Patrick's game. He's doing a good job of protecting the ball. And one of the reasons that we made the change when we made that before was because we had turned the ball over a couple times. But he's doing a great job right now protecting the ball and running the football team. We've, we've made some mistakes. We've got to eliminate the penalties in the second half to keep this thing rolling. Coach, it's a 60 great, minute game. Coach, ahead, great Eric. job defending the pass, but how are you guys going to stop? What sort of adjustments are you going to make against Marshall's run game? Well, we're going to have to turn and stand up a little bit stronger inside. I mean, because we have done a good job with our shell. We've been playing base defense. We may have to get a little bit more aggressive and bring an extra hat into the box. But we got to be careful because they've got such a dangerous passing threat and pass more. So we just got to be make sure make sure that we turn and mix it up, and keep it off balance. Coach, thanks for the time. Thank you, guys. That's East Carolina head coach Skip Holtz, his team up 13-3 at the break. And now we look at the halftime stats presented by All-State. Couple changes there. We, we've counted the provisional ballots. These are the official All-State halftime stats. Well, one of the things that really jumps out at me, Carter, is the rush yards for Marshall. They're doing a great job against ECU. And what we saw Norman Whitley against uh, the Pirates, they just haven't been able to establish the run. But it's the turnovers. Marshall, that's the key stat. You can't have turnovers on the uh, when you're on the road, and Marshall's got two, and that's really been the difference in this ballgame because they've been able to move the ball on the ground. Well, obviously, the key play at the end of the half was Devon Drew with the touchdown, the only touchdown of the first half. And as we like to do here at halftime on CBS College Sports, time once again for the Taylor made play. Well, the Taylor made play this week is. ECU's ability keep your eye on the bottom of the screen to tight end Devon Drew he's going to do a great job of selling the slant but great move right there turning the safety around running the corner doing a great job for a big man a big target he's very very good at creating separation Patrick Pinckney on the move doing a good job settling his feet laying the ball exactly where he needs to but right now that's been the weapon that ECU's been able to utilize is Devon Drew at that tight end position Marshall's going to have to keep an eye on him in the second half and eliminate him from the Pirate Arsenal. As you heard Skip Holt say, it will be Patrick Pinkney. They like the way that he has moved the football, the touchdown drive to close out the half with his eighth passing touchdown of the season. They've gone back and forth. He rallied the Pirates to a second half comeback versus UCF after East Carolina was shut out in the first half when Rob Cass got the start at QB. So Patrick Pingney, who had two monster games to begin the year against West Virginia and Virginia Tech, 80% passing against the Hokies and Mountaineers. Matt Dodge will kick it off to begin the second half, kicking to the Marshall Thundering Herd. And a tall task for Marshall down by 10. But the Thundering Herd 0-4 this year when trailing at the half. Well, I would stay with the run games. That's been working so well with them. But they've got to be able to find ways to take advantage of their playmakers on offense throwing the football. Darius Passmore is one of their better receivers. He's been ineffective in this game so far. They've got to figure out a way to put the ball in his hands or make a play on special teams. Darius Marshall bounces it outside, and Marshall, who had a 42-yard return, gets shoved into the Marshall bench, and now it gets a little chippy. Don't see any flags yet. You know, you remember back to 2007, Marshall beat East Carolina in Huntington, knocking the Pirates off the path for the CUSA East Division Championship. That's just a good, clean hit. Top I tell ten. you what, Carter, we talked about this being a physical ball game, and it has not disappointed. These two teams know what's on the stake here. Conference USA standings. Both of these teams desperately want to win the Conference USA title, and for them to do it, they have to win tonight. This is a must-win situation for both teams. Chubb Small, the first down carry. He picks up three right to midfield. And just like you said, Aaron, with, with the success of the Marshall ground game, especially when Cam's only completed two passes, obviously that's the emphasis now for both sides, both the Marshall offense and the East Carolina defense. Yeah, and he did a great job last week, had two touchdowns and zero interceptions. 
against the University of Houston because their running game was working so well. But this young man has to find a way to be able to move the ball because if Marshall becomes one dimensional, ECU will be able to take advantage of it. Play action on second down and seven. Can dumps it to the tight end Cody Slate, who leans forward to the 45. Sniffing that play out was number 44, Nick Johnson, doing a great job filling in there at middle linebacker. He's one of those kind of throwback players. He just has a good nose for the football, finds a way to go. He's won the Blackbeard Award, which is the highest defense award you can win for ECU the last two weeks because of the way he plays. He's not fancy. He's not the biggest guy. He's not the fastest guy, but he is a football player. He finds the football and knows how to make plays. East Carolina defense looking for a stop here on third down and two. Can from the shotgun. Quick hitter to guess who? Darius Passmore. He's the weapon in the passing game that Marshall hasn't been able to utilize so far. And as we suggested, this is one of the things that Marshall needs to do is be able to throw the football. Just a simple stop route. By Passmore right there, covered by Emmanuel Davis, the freshman that's had such a good game so far. This will allow and force ECU's defense to have to defend the whole field and not pin their ears back and just stop the run. First catch of the game for Darius Passmore, just the third completed pass by Marshall. Darius Marshall joins Can in the backfield for first and ten. It's Darius Marshall running for another four, maybe five yards. And with the help of Home Depot, we take a look at our tools for success. It is the Marshall ground game. Well, we talked about the importance of winning the battle up front, and Marshall's certainly been able to do that. They've done a great job, but it's been the interceptions. It's the reason that they only have three points on the ball game. Can not doing a very good job protecting the football. You've seen Emmanuel Davis come up with two interceptions, playing huge. They've got to be able to settle down, eliminate the mistakes, because they're on the road. Chubb Small to carry on second down and five, slipping out of a tackle to get another Marshall first down, rushing the football. I tell you what, you got to give credit to this big Marshall offensive line, which is dominating ECU right now. Chubb Small was untouched until he got to the secondary, doing a really good job. They're going to have to bring down safeties and get better play out of their linebackers and their defensive linemen. Right now, these guys are getting eaten up, not coming off the football, and Marshall's able to move the ball at will on the ground. Linebackers show pressure on first down. Here they come. Can leaves it well short, intended for Bryant Milligan on the first down screen. Can is just four for ten passing. Can hasn't had a bad year thus far. He's thrown for over 1,500 yards and relatively accurate passer, completing 52% of his balls. He is a freshman, and a lot of times when you get a young guy in a big game, they get a little bit nervous. It's so important for a quarterback to be able to get into a rhythm, and right now, thus far tonight, Mark Can just has not been able to do that. You have to credit the East Carolina defense there, though, don't you? Absolutely. Tosses to Darius Marshall, who finds room to run. To the nine now for Darius Marshall, who's gone over 80 rushing yards. Well, Carter, you want to know why Marshall's offense is working? You've got some great blocks on the crackback right now. Brian Milligan doing a good job up here at the top of the screen, sealing the edge. That allows Darius Marshall to be able to get to the edge. You see some missed tackles. This is what you do to be able to run the football. And Carter, when you can move the football like that on the ground, you don't need to be able to throw it. 93 rushing yards for Darius Marshall when he goes over 100. The herd are 4 0 on the season. First and goal. Guess who gets it? Darius Marshall. Finally ridden down by Daryl Reynolds, the corner. Not I'm not one to typically be a stat guy, but Marshall's 0-4 this year when trailing at half. But when you block like this and have a small guy running through and breaking tackles, you better get your arms and wrap around him if you're ECU because arm tackles just aren't going to get the job done against Darius Marshall tonight. Second down and goal from the six. Can gives it to Chubb Small trying to stretch it to the broad side. He shoved out for a loss. Dakota Marshall forces him out for a loss of maybe one. Marking at about the seven. 
Carter, what we're watching is the benefit of having two backs that you can trust for Marshall. Going back and forth between Darius Marshall and Chubb Small means that they always have a fresh back on the field. It's very hard when the defense has not been able to substitute. you got to remember, East Carolina has had a lot of injuries at the defensive line position, meaning they don't substitute much. So when you have a fresh back with fresh legs coming in, it tremendously helps the run game. Empty backfield, Darius Marshall is split wide on third down and goal. Slate the tight end lined up in the slot left. Can to Slate for the touchdown. Marshall's into the end zone on the opening drive of the second half. That's exactly what Marshall needed to do. Great job by Can setting up and throwing to his money guy. Cody Slate for the touchdown. Just a simple post pattern. Good job by Slate of finding the seam in that hole in the defense and credit the run game in being able to open up that defense to create room for that pass on that touchdown. Ritana Morn for the PAT. It is no good. Off the upright, it is no good. East Carolina can run this back. They now they're gonna whistle it dead. How is that? Off the upright. That's that's why that's why it's no good. Off the upright. So they call the play dead. That was nearly a sneaky play there for Daryl Reynolds. He was lying in the weeds waiting to pick that one up and take it back. So dead ball, it's off the upright. PAT is no good. Carter, that's one of the things you talk about and you learn in football at Pop Warner level, playing to the whistle. There was no whistle that was blown. I think there was a little bit of confusion. But they scored a touchdown, and Marshall is right back in this ball game, making it a four-point ball game. 13 ECU, Marshall nine. Over 43,000 here at Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina. A sellout crowd to watch the top two teams in Conference USA's Eastern Division. A year ago, Marshall knocked East Carolina out of first place in Huntington, and now the Pirates trying to return the favor. But the slate touchdown catch at the end of that Marshall drive has pulled the thundering herd within four after the missed PAT from Ratanamorn, who's now missed a 26-yard field goal and a PAT. Short kickoff handled by one of the ECU up and returned to the 35. It's going to be good offensive field position to be able to start the first drive of the second half for the Pirates. The Pirates do a very good job historically going in at halftime and making adjustments. So it's going to be interesting to see what they come out. Take a look at this third quarter right here. They outscore their opponent 64 to 29. Right now the defense didn't seem to make adjustments and Marshall got the better of them. Let's see if the Pirate offense can respond and put some points up on the board. But Marshall definitely has the momentum and the confidence right now to start the third quarter. This is the first offensive drive of the second half for East Carolina. Pinkney on first down, swings it out to Dwayne Harris, who cuts it back for a nice seven-yard game. We, we expected to see some of that early on. Pinkney to Dwayne Harris, and sure enough, Todd Fitch dials it up on the first offensive play of the second half. Well, that's Dwayne Harris's dream come true, is getting the ball quick into his hands on the quick screen out in the flat so he can use his athletic ability to make plays. Gets eight yards on that first down. High formation backfield on second down and two. Pinkney backs away. Jason Simmons leading the way for Norman Whitley, who's near the first down. No fumble on the play. The ball was dead. More the line judge standing. This looks like a ECU first down. And it is. Good job by Mario Harvey. Linebacker for Marshall on that time coming over on the backside with a cutback. Norman Whitley using the great vision he has in short yardage to be able to get the first down. ECU again, we talked about the importance of getting into a rhythm. They've got to have some success here on first down. 42 rushing yards for Norman Whitley after he had a career high 134 last Sunday versus UCF. Whitley takes it again on first down. Nice seal block on the edge to get Whitley some room to run into Marshall territory. 
Carter, that it looked like that block was or that run was supposed to go up inside. ECU making a concerted effort to go inside, but the tight end, whether he gets beat or is trying to seal right here on the edge, does a good job of coming out, and Whitley just breaks off the block using his speed and stiff arm right there. Remember, he's not a big guy, but he's very strong. Great job getting first down, creating a second and five for that play. Second down, swing it to Dwayne Harris in the flat again. That is tackling in space, Mr. Taylor. T.J. Drakeford. T.J. Drakeford doing a good job of tackling in space. That is what you need to be able to do on defense. Right now, the receiver just turns his back. He should have made a mistake. He should have blocked Drakeford right there. Not very helping his buddy out very much out there in the edge. Dwayne Harris paid for it that time. Third down coming up for ECU. Three of seven on third down tonight, the Pirates. Pressure coming from the near side. East Carolina picks it up, allowing Pinkney to find Dwayne Harris, who's dragged down finally at the 37. Well, Carter, you talked about how do you beat the blitz. You pass protect, you have good protection, you sit down there in the zone and get the ball to your best playmaker, Dwayne Harris. We talked about his ability to be able to stretch the field, how rangy and tall he is, runs a great crisp route, finds the seam in the defense, moves the chains for the Pirates. Fourth catch of the night for the Pirates' leading receiver, Dwayne Harris, the sophomore from Stone Mountain, Georgia. Back to the run on first down. Michael Janik was sitting on it. Norman Whitley dropped for a negligible game. Michael Janik looked like he was unblocked as fast as he came off the line of scrimmage. There was nobody back there when Whitley tried to break the ball backside. That could be caused from confusion, but this Marshall defense, Rick Minner, the defensive coordinator, doing a good job of sending his players and keeping this run game in check so far but clearly they're trying to be a little bit more balanced throw the ball downfield while still maintaining the run as they bring the safety down before the snap. Pamey identifying the blitz on second down he goes the other way throwing it to Joe Womack the true freshman who makes just the fourth catch of his East Carolina career. Go ahead on Joe Womack from Jacksonville North Carolina. Pinckney now in a rhythm, clearly being able to distribute the football, sit inside the pocket, not have fast feet. And that offensive line looked like they're doing a great job as well as the running backs and picking the blitzes up. And Carter, when you can give a quarterback time, good things are going to happen offensively. Third down and short. Pinckney under center now. With Norman Whitley behind him, motion on the line. It looked like it was Janik making contact. And Crowfoot. Contact, defense, number 90, five-yard penalty. The penalty will result in the first down. Great job by Pinckney, hard counting and using the inflection to draw the defense offside. That is a great way to slow down a defense that does a good job of getting off the football. When you're able to do that, you get a free five yards, creating the first down. This Pirate offense is in sync, and a big reason why is because of Patrick Pinckney. He's played the whole way for East Carolina. No QB rotation tonight. Norman Whitley picks up three on the first down carry. Of course, Whitley taking over that East Carolina running back position, but a guy named Chris Johnson ended up having a pretty good East Carolina career. He exploded in his senior year, 1,400 rushing yards, and he's carried it right to the Tennessee Titans. He is the fourth leading rusher in the NFL, leads the AFC. He was on this field a year ago. Whitley looking a little bit like Johnson with the downhill. That's kind of the emphasis from the run game. Steve Shankweiler is the co-offensive coordinator, offensive line coach, and he and Skip Holtz pound into the backs. Downhill, downhill. Good job. You take a look at a great job by the fullback. Jason Simmons It's just a lead right there, creating some room from Norman Whitley to be able to move the pile. That is physical football. Right now, ECU doing a good job of smashing it up inside, being physical, and also throwing the ball. Right now, very balanced offense for the Pirates. Third down and short. The jumbo package on third and three. Whitley picking his way through near a first down. This could be close. So pushing and shoving downfield, too, but no flag. Carter, I'm sitting here taking a look. They got it. At 
at the center, Sean Allen for ECU, just drove this guy literally into the end zone, 15 yards downfield. Talk about sustaining your block and being aggressive. That's the sign of a confidence offensive line, and they are showing the production right now by the way they're able to move the football. But if they can continue to get production out of these guys the way that they're doing, ECU is going to be very happy at the end of the night. That's a statement call there, is it? Third and three, and you go with the jumbo package? <laughs> it's physical football, man on man. Pinkney to the end zone for Harris, batted it incomplete. Dangerous ball into double coverage. Very dangerous ball. You got to credit him for trying to go to Dwayne Harris, but you throw in a double coverage. Dwayne Harris missed times his jumps, not able to get there. Fakes with the double move, but the safety's right there expecting him. Patrick Pinkney's very lucky he didn't get that ball intercepted. Spillman and Drakeford on the coverage. Good job by Marshall's defense to break on that ball. 157 passing for Pinckney trying to get the Pirates in the end zone on the first drive of the second half toss to Whitley every time he touches the football it's been positive yards for East Carolina and it's so impressive for a guy that's 5'9 less than 190 pounds this was the fourth string running back and Carter the sign of a good team is having depth ECU we all know how well they started out you never want to make excuses but there were some Injuries on this team that really, really hurt them. They had some suspensions. But when you have a guy like Norman Whitley, a young sophomore, step in and be able to run the way he's been able to do, it helps your offense and your team out tremendously. Out of the game on third down and five, it's Brandon Simmons, the lone back. A four-wide look with Devon Drew at the bottom of the screen. Pinkney looks the other way, completes it. But is it a first down? T.J. Lee turns the corner. And he looks to be about a yard short. Indeed, he is. That's a full yard short, bringing up fourth down and one. Carter Patrick Pinkney could not have thrown that football any better. That was on a frozen rope. It was a dart out there. He hit the receiver right in stride, but unfortunately, the route was a little bit short. And credit Marshall's defense for being all over it and stopping a crucial third down play. Skip Holt says, let's take the almost guaranteed three points 21 yard field goal attempt from Ben Hartman it is good so field goal drive on the first possession of the second half and it's a 16 9 lead for East Carolina back to a touchdown lead how will Marshall respond it's a seven point lead for East Carolina on Marshall now after the latest Ben Hartman field goal as we check out our Bud Light stat six pack, Aaron, what, what numbers stand out to you at this point with 2.55 to go in the third? Well, Marshall's rushing game has been very impressive. They've clearly made a concerted effort to run the football up front. They haven't been able to throw it. You look at only 30 passing yards thus far in the ball game. Remember, Coach Schneider talked about having a balanced offense. He wanted to establish a run, but the lack of the ability of the Marshall Thundering Herd to be able to throw the football has really hurt them. It's been the turnovers, though, Carter, those two turnovers early in the first quarter by the great play of Emmanuel Davis, a young freshman, that has been the difference in this ballgame. You eliminate those two turnovers, Marshall could very well be in this ballgame up by two touchdowns. East Carolina taking the seven point lead after that 14 play seven minute 24 second drive ending in the Hartman field goal. Marshall has nearly broke a couple of these in the kicking game. Very well coached on special teams and there's been a couple times where you hold your breath because you see some seams open up. If Marshall can make a big play they can break this game wide open. Instead Matt Dodge kicking it away and he squeaks out of bounds. That's a uh, safer than sorry. Kick out of bounds. By rule, the ball is put on the 40 yard line. First down. Media timeout. Marshall trailing by seven, gets the football at the 40. Can the herd come up with a touchdown drive to tie it?
Marshall seeking its first second half come from behind. Win of the year, its first ever win in Greenville, North Carolina. It was a touchdown drive the last time that Mark Cannon, the Marshall offense, had the ball, thanks in large part to Darius Marshall. Darius Marshall doing a great job of having some all-purpose yards, making some plays on special teams, but also when the ball's in his hand, able to run, get to the outside. Great edge blocking by Marshall and execution there. And just when you think that Marshall can't throw the football, they turn around and find the big tight end, Cody Slate, making for the touchdown. Marshall has to be able to find a way to get into a rhythm and have the same sort of mixed run-pass ratio in the second half on this drive to keep this ECU defense off balance, which thus far tonight they've basically had their way with. And it has pretty much been the ground game taken over. So going back to your progressive keys, Confucius has apparently changed his mind about the balance. Darius Marshall shoved back on the first down carry with the forward progress. It's a loss of one. ECU making an adjustment maybe with a run blitz here. You see a good job of number 44, Nick Johnson, smelling that play right away, meeting the running back in the backfield. Doesn't make the tackle, though, but he slows his guy up enough for his buddies to come over. And when you swarm to the football on defense and can time plays like that, you're doing well, bringing up a second and long for Marshall. Expecting the pass on second down. Everybody backed up for the ECU defense. Can fakes the give to Marshall, dumps it off, and it'll be another loss on second down. Great pursuit from Jeremy Chambliss. Chambliss does a great job, but keep your eye out on the right edge on number five, 95, C.J. Wilson. Great leverage, keeping contained, does not let the quarterback be able to get out there. Let's the linebackers and the safeties come up and be able to make plays. Travis Simmons up there, coming from the cornerback position, bringing up a third and long, something that Marshall hasn't faced much of in this ballgame. Call it third down and ten. Marshall three of nine on third down so far. East Carolina stops the run on first down. Forcing third down and 10. Can has it batted. Nearly picked. It's incomplete. Great job by the ECU defense again of finding the football. Keep your eye again on number 44, Nick Johnson. He has a nose for the football. Good job by Darius Passmore to try and get in the zone, but when you have a guy that can make plays like that, old number Nick Johnson, the junior, out of Charlotte, North Carolina, coming up huge and gets a great pet and much needed pass breakup. Now it's ECU's turn to maybe see if they can get something going on special teams and move the ball and put some more points up on the board. First punt of the night for Marshall. Whitehead gets it away. T.J. Lee and Freeney let it bounce, and it takes an East Carolina bounce. The Pirate offense is going to take over at the 33. Patrick Pinkney and the Pirates stake to a seven-point lead. 25 combined points between Marshall and East Carolina. A long way from the 2001 GMAC Bowl game when they combined for 125. David Garrard leading East Carolina to a 38-8 halftime lead. But Byron Leftwich and the Thundering Herd come thundering back and eventually win it 64-61. Double overtime, the highest scoring bowl game in history. Marshall over East Carolina, 64 to 61. And yeah, you look at the 2008 versions of these teams, quite a bit different. Well, Carter, and the reason why is look right here, it points aloud. East Carolina and Marshall lead the Conference USA in this defensive ranking, and they're doing a great job of it tonight. Only 25 combined points. Both defenses doing a very good job at spots in this ball game. It's going to be the team that can eliminate the mistake and make the big play that will win. Pinkney stumbles coming away from center and dumps it off to J.R. Kramer for the first catch of the season. Coming up in the fourth quarter, we'll have the Wrangler five-star play of the game. And with a minute four left to go in the third seven-point game, have we seen 
the play of the game yet. I, I don't think we have. We saw some early interceptions that have been the story thus far, but something tells me that Marshall has a lot of pride and that they're going to find a way. Remember, this is only a seven point ball game, even with the missed PATs. At a seven point ball game, Marshall is well capable of scoring a touchdown and making this thing very interesting. But first, the herd defense has to come up with a stop. Second down and seven here. Pinkney sees something in the defense, wants to change the play. Gives it off to Whitley, who has plenty of room. Finally wrestled down by Bembry, close to a first down. He's maybe a yard shy, maybe two. That was a great job of execution and blocking. Whitley wasn't touched until again he got to the second level. And ECU doing a good job of mixing the run and pass. Early on, they're very, very balanced, doing a much better job than Marshall has. But when you're able to run the football, Carter, it opens up the passing game. And Patrick Pinckney is having a very good night throwing the football. He's 18 of 25 passing. That will be the end of the third quarter. It's 16 to 9, East Carolina on Marshall. As we go to the fourth quarter, the top two teams in Conference USA's Eastern Division. Battling it out in the final 15 when we return to Greenville. In the spirit of Blackbeard and the Pirates of old on the outer banks of North Carolina, no quarter, no surrender is what the Pirate fans are looking for here in the fourth. 16 to 9, East Carolina leading Marshall by a touchdown. First play of the fourth quarter will be third down and two for the East Carolina offense. Whitley running away from the pressure, stopped short. He's going to be a yard short of the first down as Albert McClellan leads the charge. Mark Snyder's defense comes up with a big stop to begin the fourth quarter Carter and that's exactly what we're talking about that's exactly what Marshall needed to happen their defense stepped up and made a play ECU's been in the rhythm lately but they got him out of it now they need a big return or a big offensive play and they are right back in this ball game span lets it bounce and now it's going to roll all the way to the four before it's finally picked up Emmanuel Spann let that one hit and roll, and it rolls all the way inside the five. You see a very animated Coach Holtz on the sideline and animated players. They think that it might have touched a Marshall player. See Coach Holtz not happy, very concerned. It's funny, the East Carolina fans, about half of them were cheering because they doubted it inside the five. Half of them booing because they thought it hit Span. It looks really close, like it did hit Span Carter on that last play, but the referees were right on top of it and ruled that it did not, bringing up first down and a very long way to go for a touchdown for the Thundering Herd. The previous play is being reviewed. Keep an eye on Span's left leg right there is what they're looking at. Dakota Marshall being heads up, not sure whether or not he touched it or not, but being safer than sorry and picking the ball up. I don't think there was anything in that replay that definitively said it went off a span. If you'd seen the ball deflect a little bit off his ankle or something along those lines, it, it, obviously the ball is close to Emmanuel's span, but this is obviously from the opposite end zone, but maybe we can take a look. I agree. It looks very close, but you don't see any deflection or redirection of the football. It has to be definitive, and I would tend to agree right there. It looks very close, but maybe credit Span for being light on his feet and getting out of the way of that football. Well, both of these scenarios play out well for East Carolina. The worst they can come out of this is having Marshall pinned back to the three-yard line. Best you can come out of it is the football at the three going into the end zone. They certainly do have a long way to go. And with the way they've been moving the football, it's going to be a long 96 yards for them to be able to go all the way down and score. But they've had success running the football. But keep an eye there. Looks very close like it touches, spans the inside of his left leg. 
Go to Marshall being heads up, grabbing the football and wanting the touchdown. Well, it begins with Emmanuel Span not coming up to grab the punt. A lot of times, right there is what they're looking at to see if it touched them there. I just don't see a ball redeflection and don't see anything definitive. And unless they're seeing something very different than what we're seeing from up here, Carter, and what we saw live, I think this is going to be first down and 10 for the Thunder and Herd. And again, this is an official review. It's not a challenge from either team. This would be a heck of a win for Mark Snyder's Marshall team. We mentioned they have not come back to win a game when trailing at the half this season. You know, there was some pressure on Mark Snyder when they went through the three-game losing streak earlier. They came back with the backs against the wall and beat Houston. But you have to remember that Mark Snyder took over a program. They had NCAA academic violations under previous head coach Bob Pruitt, so the scholarships were just now in his fourth season, just now back to the full 85 scholarships that a Division I A program has. So you, you're seeing a lot more younger players and maybe a better class of player on the field now for Marshall as freshmen and sophomores. Now that you're back to 85, I know that folks are thinking about 2009 with some optimism around the Thundering Herd program, and they're even 3-1 and one in conference maybe a year ahead of schedule, especially if they can get a win tonight. Yeah, Carter, there's no question that the deck, uh, the deck was certainly stacked against Schneider and what it is when he took over this program, but he's no stranger to, to what it takes to be successful and has done a good job of bringing his team in and not letting them get taken away from him and won three of four national championships when he was at Youngstown State between 1991 and 1994, so he knows how to win football games and knows what it takes and now that you're back up to speed and have full scholarships and have the 85 it allows you to be able to be more competitive. After review, the play calls a stand. Marshall's ball, first down. And it could have hit off span, but obviously, as we thought, there was no clear replay saying that it went off the span. A lot of times on special teams when the ball's like that, you'll hear guys say, Peter, 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 Peter. That's the hot word that the ball's on the ground and you must get rid of it. Span does a good job of jumping out of the way in the football, but the bottom line is he's going to get an earful from his coach because he shouldn't have been that close for that very reason. Balls take squirrely bounces, and even if you think it's nowhere near you, the only way to be sure is to get as far away from the football as you can. Span got very lucky on that play. Marshall's average field position starting at the 31. This time they start at the three. With the crowd doing everything it can to distract him. Darius Marshall the first down give and he leans for a two maybe three yard gain. Creating a little bit of breathing room. One of the things you want to be able to do you. Maybe want to come out and do a play action pass and maybe take a shot right out of the gate, but then that would have brought up an, an incompletion, a second and ten. So getting a good belly zone up inside, getting some positive breathing room, getting away from that goal line to avoid the safety is probably what's on Marshall's mind. They get a big chunk or a first down right here, they'll be off and running. Can back to pass on second and seven. The pump, the toss, and the incomplete pass. Intended for EJ Wynn. This play was a little bit forced. Good job by the cornerback there. Travis Simmons staying with him. The safety. JJ Millbrook coming over the top to be able to help. But at the bottom of the screen, Darius Passmore looked like he was wide open. Marcan may have missed a very big opportunity there offensively, throwing to the wrong side of the field. With the way Can's throwing the football, do you pass here even though it's third down, or do you just run and get some space? Well, if you do, you throw it to 85. Can looking long for Passmore. He has to come back to get it, but he holds it in for a huge gain into East Carolina territory. Penalty flag on the play at the end of the play. Well, Carter, I think you answered your own question there. That's something we haven't seen of a whole lot of tonight.
Might have been excessive celebration after the play in which the catch would stand and the ball would just be moved back. Flag came in very late. We have no flag on the play for taunting. No flag. I think that's the right call. I do, absolutely. I think the referees have kind of overcorrected and oversteered trying to eliminate it, but Marcan does a good job of throwing the ball up, but the credit goes to Darius Passmore on the slant route, doing a great job of beating one on one coverage out on the edge and getting the better of Travis Simmons there. Chubb Small trying to bounce it out, shoved out. A 51 yard pass play there from Mark Can to Darius Passmore. That changes the dynamics. I mean, you usually talk about a special teams play flipping the field, but that 51 yard pass play flips it for Marshall. I tell you what, keep a look at the right of your screen. Darius Passmore doing a good job selling the out route, but just the safety bites on the inside, leaving one on one coverage for Darius Passmore as he jets inside the middle of the field for the wide open 50 yard plus play. And now, just like I told you, Carter, Marshall has an opportunity to score and be right back inside this ball game. Play fake on second down, the check down to a dragging EJ win for minimal gain. As we check in with New York at the CBS College Sports Desk. All right, Carter, thank you very much. A check on number three, Penn State. Iowa got within two, then turns it over, and Derek Williams takes advantage. One cut, and he's in. Penn State leading 23-14 in the fourth. Penn State with the ball right now. Adam here in Greenville, North Carolina. It's a 16-9 East Carolina lead on Marshall. The thundering herd have third down and eight. Mark Cannon has completed only eight passes tonight. Make it nine as he dumps it down to Darius Marshall, who's shoved back. Emmanuel Davis leading the East Carolina defense on the third down stop. I tell you what, Emmanuel Davis is having a heck of a ball game, a heck of a last two ball games. The young freshman showing up making plays and Chris Maddox there taking a look at him. He's playing some good football too. He's a backup at a New Bern, North Carolina. Just a junior. That was his 10th tackle on the year and made it an important one. Huge third down play. Just the second punt of the night for Marshall. Whitehead, the true freshman from Maryville, Tennessee. Gets a good one off. Fair catch, called for, fumble, looks like it's recovered by Daryl Freeney. And it is. East Carolina keeps it after the bobbled punt. 11-17 to go, seven-point game. Darius Passmore, who had that 51-yard catch on the last Marshall possession, being checked out now by the Marshall training staff. Look at the Energizer game summary now. The passing yards big time in East Carolina's favor, but look at Darius Marshall with 99 rushing yards now for the Thundering Herd leading their impressive ground game. Well, the ground game has been certainly what's been keeping Marshall in this ball game. And those two early turnovers that you look at right there really have cost Marshall the ability to be able to have a little bit more points in this ball game. But you have to be able to credit the adjustments that the defense made for the Pirates in the second half because right now Marshall hadn't been able to get as much going offensively as they did in the first half. Play fake on first down. That one just a hair off on the timing. Incomplete to Taylor as we check in again with the CBS College Sports Desk. All right, Carter, thanks. Number one, Bama back on top for the first time since it was 7-0 after a 24-yard run. Glenn Coffey following Andre Smith into the end zone, and the Tide leads in the Bayou 21-14. Remember the SEC postgame show at 7 Eastern. Wanted to talk about on that SEC postgame show, including the shocking result in Knoxville, Wyoming, beating the Tennessee Volunteers. More on that coming up after the ball game as Whitley gets that one in the flat. Well, the time of possession big time in favor of Marshall, but 
maybe from the Kevin Sumlin school of thought it doesn't matter all that much. Yeah time of possession a lot of times doesn't mean anything because you take a look at their Marshall dominating and that's because of their run game but it's been turnovers that have been the story we talked about that at the beginning of the game you have to bring your defense and protect the football and thus far ECU or excuse me Marshall has done one of those two things and they got to get their pass game going something they did on that last drive but they weren't able to finish. Third down and short. Pinkney pressured, finds his check down. Brandon Simmons, who is close to the first down. Pinkney just kind of flipped it out there at the last second and may end up with a first down. Corey Hart doing a good job for Marshall responding to that play and good protection up front for Patrick Pinkney. And nobody was open, so he throws the ball to the check down, hitting Simmons out in the flat and making the first down but Marshall's defense is well aware with their big front and their very active linebacker crew able to make a play but they've got to cause a turnover here do something to get ECU out of its rhythm. It's been all Patrick Pinkney at quarterback play action on first down time to throw Pinkney looking long for TJ Lee who holds it in to the Marshall 35. Biggest pass play of the day from Patrick Pinkney. Carter, earlier in the game, you asked me how you beat your blitz. Brandon Simmons doing a good job of picking the cornerback that blitz on the outside. Safety late getting over. TJ Lee doing a good job of getting behind the coverage and behind the safety. And let me tell you what, Patrick Pinkney threw that ball on a dime. Very accurate deep ball hitting TJ Lee in stride. Great job for a guy who last week didn't look nearly as consistent as he's playing tonight. 41 yard pickup on the play to TJ Lee. Pinkney keeps it on first down. Picks up a couple before Bembry makes the stop. Pinkney slow getting up. RJ Detillier, the referee, helps him back to his feet. I'll tell you what, these two teams are playing very physical. Pinkney calls his own number. Good aggressive block on the outside by the tight end, Devon Drew, but. Pinkney only able to get three or four yards and there's a little bit a little mojo after the play and given a business. It's been that type of game Carter pretty physical. Saw offensive coordinator Todd Fitch before the game East Carolina and he said I think we're going to have a physical one today one way or the other. Second down Pinkney to the air again completes it to Joe Womack who makes another nice grab to put East Carolina in the red zone to the 16. Pinkney doing a great job of throwing the football, threading it in between the zone. Three Marshall defenders around Joe Womack, the young freshman who comes up with another big catch. That's the sign of a confident quarterback when he throws that ball and it's got zip on it into coverage like that into the zone. It's the sign of a guy who's feeling good. And Patrick Pinkney, with the way he's played tonight, should feel very good about how he's throwing the football. Seventh play of the drive is a first down carry for Whitley, who gets dropped in the backfield. Daquan Bembry makes a stop. Well, that's classic Rick Minner defense bringing the cornerbacks up and causing pressure. They know that with a seven point lead and just a little under eight minutes in this fourth quarter, that ECU is going to try and run the football. So they took a chance there and a little bit more aggressive on the outside edge, but they got to be careful. As we see Devon Drew lined out on the short side of the field one on one without very much safety help. We'll see what he's able to do, but ECU throwing the football. Pinkney finds Whitley. On the shovel or the screen, one way or the other, he gets to the 15. Now Marshall thinks it comes away with the football. Some of the Marshall coaches are literally jumping up and down thinking they came up with it and they did. Fumble taken over by Marshall. Great job by the defense of the thundering herd. That's exactly what they need. Clearly the ball is out before his knee hits the ground. Thundering herd the green wave around the football. Mario Harvey coming up with the football great fumble recovery Carter when you're on the road you have to bring your defense and what better way to make up for turnovers than to force them and in the red zone of all places great job by the thundering herd defense.
It's going to be a simple middle screen or bubble screen. They throw it in the inside, but they swarm to the football, and there was that last hit right there by Albert McClellan. They're going to take a look at this upstairs, but well, great Skip, job. Skip Holtz was Time waiting out. to see. East Carolina, their first timeout. This will be a media timeout. Skip Holtz was waiting to see if they would take a look at it upstairs. Instead, he takes a timeout. We will take another look at that ruling, which was called a fumble. Let's take a look at the play that was called a fumble. I think the only question is, was Norman Whitley's forward progress stopped? And we certainly didn't hear a whistle. Certainly didn't hear a whistle up top. And credit Maurice Kitchens, the first one to the football. And right there at the very end, Albert McClellan, the defensive end, coming by and knocking that ball free. From here, I got to be honest, doesn't look good for the Pirates. It looks like the football comes out pretty early. Clearly, the ball is out and on the ground before his knee is down. The play on the field is confirmed. A fumble. Marshall recovering. First down. East Carolina is charged a timeout. Wow. That's a huge play by that Thundering Herd defense. Great job by them forcing the fumble on a relatively safe play. Rarely will you see a turnover on that because the ball doesn't have to get thrown that far. It's usually batted down or thrown into the ground, but it was completed. Norman Whitley, unfortunately, couldn't hang on to it. And the reason he couldn't is because he had a herd of thundering herds around him that forced him free. So now the pressure in the question is whether this young man, Mark Can, the quarterback, can respond. Plenty of time, a seven point ball game. Can they march the field? Can they throw the football? We know that they've been able to run it. Do they have what it takes to go the length of the field with Conference USA Eastern Division leadership on the line? A Marshall team which is just one just once away from Huntington, West Virginia, looking for a huge road win here. That pass incomplete, intended for Emmanuel Span on first down. An aggressive play call on first and ten. Very aggressive as a seam right, and Emmanuel Span lost his footing. Couldn't really sit down and fumble the football, but good job by Mark Can hanging in there with the big hit by the linebacker coming up the middle of the defense and bringing the wood, but good moxie and toughness by the young freshman quarterback. Can has just completed nine passes. He's nine of 18 on the day. Plenty of time to throw on second and 10, intended for Passmore, batted away by Dakota Marshall. As Passmore was trying to come back to the football. Dakota Marshall did a great job of being in coverage. He smelled that right away. Passmore does a good job of running the quarter route. But Marshall sitting there makes a play on the ball and that young man, barring the personal foul penalty of hitting Cam out of bounds late, has played a tremendous ball game. This defensive backfield for ECU has shown up and played tremendously tonight. A huge third down and 10 play. Marshall trailing by seven with 7.16 to go. Can on third and 10, completes it to his tight end, Cody Slate. Move the chains, Marshall's hope is a lot credit can for tremendous presence to be able to stay in that pocket defensive end Zach Slate for ECU is going to be there right at the end hits him right as he throws the football but he had the patience to stay in there and deliver the football for the first down that's rare to see that out of a young freshman quarterback to be have the presence of mind to sit in that pocket knowing he's going to take the hit and deliver the football accurately Marshall forced into throwing on third down they complete it the pump on first down looking long for Marshall again and Darius Marshall nearly comes up with a great grab Emmanuel Davis in coverage and then a freshman quarterback will also do that which is play up for grabs on the sideline into double coverage something that we saw them do earlier in the night and that's what you're going to get out of a young 
freshman quarterback is some good and some bad but thus far I think Mark Hand's done a relatively decent job for being on the road in a hostile environment with the crowd going crazy bringing up a big second and long situation they've got to be able to get something going offensively here and if they're going to do it make no mistake about it Mark Hand's going to have to make a play Darius Marshall the second down carry bounces it back picks up the first down and more Darius says I am Marshall great job again credit Darius Marshall and that offensive line doing a good job of blowing those guys out Marshall doing a good job of keeping his legs pumping and refusing to be take taken down good job once he gets to the second level he refuses to get taken down keeps his leg moving using tremendous quickness he's so small that sometimes he gets hit behind that offensive line but make no mistake it those big guys up front are doing their job Marshall gets the first down carry and gets it across midfield to the 49 with the clock rolling to six minutes in a seven point game Carter there were about 17 missed tackles on that previous long run that Marshall had ECU is going to have to shore that up. They can ill afford to give a big runaway. You remember, you go back to that Virginia game. They had two missed tackles that allowed big long runs that cost them the ball game. They can't afford to have that happen again here tonight. Somebody in the neutral zone, but he got back. It was Zach Slate leaning in. He got back. The pass complete, bringing up another big third down. Third downs is seemingly what this game has been about. This is a tremendous football game. Both these teams are playing their hearts out. Very well coached, very aggressive, very physical. We knew coming into this ball game that it was going to be physical. And you got to take your hat off to two teams that have so much on the line that are coming off losing streaks that have had up and down years with some good and some bad. This is a huge game and a huge play in the fourth quarter for both of these teams. Third down and four with Can out of the shotgun. Pirates show pressure up the middle and now back off, allowing Can to fling it to the sideline, incomplete, intended for Milligan. Decision time now for Marshall. 450 left. Are you in four down territory? Well, I don't know if you are, but the way your offense is playing, they're bringing on their punt team, but credit defensive coordinator Greg Hudson from the ECU for sending pressure that time. Number 19, Chris Maddox from the linebacker position hit Mark Can just as he was throwing, making sure that the ball was errant and uncatchable out there on the edge. A very aggressive third down play for the Pirates paid off. Whitehead will punt to Freeney, the three backs to protect against the punt block short kick short kick by Whitehead will take a Marshall bounce to roll inside the 20. They down it with four minutes 40 seconds showing on the clock East Carolina the lead and the ball. Sandra Bullock's alma mater, East Carolina University, with a lead on Billy Crystal's former school, Marshall University, 16 to 9. Top two teams in Conference USA's Eastern Division. A year ago, Mark Snyder's hurt knocked East Carolina off the track to the CUSA championship game. They would love to make it to the championship game themselves. 440 to go in the fourth. Seven point East Carolina game. Pirates have the football, meaning Marshall has to come up with a stop. Well, hey, they did it last time, and if I was Coach Schneider, that's exactly what I would be talking to my team about. Hey, we have to force turnovers. We have to find a way to make a play. It can happen on special teams with a big hit. It can happen on defense with a turnover or a fumble. We did it before. We can do it again. Marshall's no stranger to being in adverse situations, but with only a seven-point ball game, Carter, they are well within it. They they have to play confident and expect to make a big play because ECU has proven that it can turn the football over. Pirates quick snap it coming out of the timeout. Marshall appears ready though. McClellan stops Brandon Simmons for a yard, maybe two on first down. 
ECU certainly wants to bleed this clock out a little over four minutes. They're in what you call a four minute offense and this is why when you have a lead you want to be able to try and run the football and take as much time off the clock as you can. The good news for Marshall is they should be able to know what's coming and barring something crazy where they do a play action pass Marshall has a chance to be able to stop turn this ball over and downs get the hands back in their offense. They may have taken too much time here the play clock hit zeros no flag they got it off Simmons on the second down carry is dragged down bring it up third down and long after a couple of solid plays by the Marshall defense Carter that's something we haven't talked a whole lot about is the speed of that Marshall defense but when you take a look at the plays that ECU has run tonight it's been tremendous you look at the play clock here two one oh very very close maybe 0 0.4 on the play clock as they snap it the refs are usually on it they didn't call it it probably didn't happen but that's a little too close for comfort third down and eight Marshall has to get a stop the rollout from Pinckney on third and eight throws it out of bounds incomplete the thundering herd come up with the defensive stop they needed with 3 4 to go in the fourth I tell you what Carter take a look at right here the receiver Dwayne Harris the safety comes down a little bit late Patrick Pinckney making the decision to be better safe than sorry and throwing it away it's a good call third and long but the way that ECU's defense has been playing the second half you're much better off with them on the field trying to stop Marshall's offense than you are creating a big turnover deep in your side of the field remember the last punt was the wacky one that span dropped he nearly dropped this one manages to cover it up and ventures in the kicking game for Emmanuel Span. So Marshall gets the football trailing by seven 256 to go. Can Marshall mount a game tying drive. College football on CBS College Sports has been brought to you by Wrangler makers of Wrangler five star premium denim jeans. And by Miller Highlight, good on his beer at a tasty price. That's ice cold common sense. It's a seven point game with two minutes 56 seconds remaining in the fourth quarter. Mark Can needs to lead a touchdown drive. But before the drive, we take a look at our Bud Light stat six pack. Rushing yards in favor of Marshall. And with 256, you do have time to establish the run on this drive, don't you? There's no question, and timeouts are certainly in Marshall's favor. They have three still. But the way they've been able to run the football and protect the line of scrimmage, I would expect them with only 60 yards to go to get into the end zone to run the football at some point. But Carter, they're going to have to throw at some point on this drive, and that's something they just haven't been able to do well. Pressure so coming far. from the Pirates. Can has to get rid of it too quickly. Incomplete for Darius Marshall. Pirate defense showing pressure again. Zach Slate doing a good job of being right in Mark Cann's face right as he's throwing the football, which is a good thing because Brandon Simmons had a lot of room to run out there in that flat had Cann been able to get him the football. Brings up second and ten. So a Marshall offensive unit, which has averaged nearly five yards a carry on the ground today. Throwing on first down, can out of the shotgun on second down. Pressured and sacked by Zach Slate at the 35 with the clock rolling. That's old number 41, Zach Slate, the lightning of what they call lumber and lightning. Look at the top of your screen, beating freshman C.J. Wood on the inside rip move for the sack. Huge play by the Pirate defense, and that's Slate's four and a half sacks on the year for him because of moves like that. Slate is the second lightest player in NCAA behind Akron, has another sophomore, Sean Lemon, who's listed at 220. Great job for 220-pound defensive end. Third and 16, can to pass more. Incomplete and no flag. Lockdown coverage from Emmanuel Davis. Emmanuel Davis showing up huge again, running stride for stride with Passmore. Passmore had his hands on this ball. He could have came down with it as Davis falls a little bit, but Passmore is going to know that he missed a tremendous opportunity right there. But you got to credit great coverage by Emmanuel Davis. So with three timeouts, 
in his pocket. Mark Snyder says, let's punt it away and try and stop him as quickly as we did the last time. Remember that? That's a three timeouts left for Mark Snyder. So well, he, can, he can stop it. No question. And it's fourth and 15. And with the ball the way it is, a turnover on downs at this point in the field would assuredly end the game. At least this way, you have the possibility of creating a turnover on maybe a bobbled fair catch or something center quarterback exchange or maybe just defense making a play you have three timeouts so that's a great call Freeney backed up to the 17. Take, take a job and look at Slade up here on the left of your screen he'll come in late with a big sack they call him lightning with lumber because he's quick CJ Wilson on the other side who's more of the big guy that brings the wood but these two guys look at the difference in that Zach Slate playing division 1A football at 220 pounds ladies and gentlemen there is not very few players in college football that could be able to do their job and do it as effectively as Zach Slate with a frame like his but the senior is tenacious has a motor that won't stop and that's the reason why he's a tremendous playmaker and leader for this defense Pinkney on the first down draw timeout Marshall Mark Snyder thinks Marshall their first 30 second timeout Thinks maybe a few seconds ticked off. A couple extra seconds ticked off. So Mark Snyder takes the first of his three timeouts. A minute 53 to go. The top two teams in Conference USA, East Carolina has only lost once at home. Marshall has only won one game on the road this year. And here we are locked in a seven point game with a minute 53. It is East Carolina football. Marshall needs a stop. They have two timeouts left to stop the clock. Well, for the stat junkies out there, we said that Marshall's 0-4 on the year when they've trailed at halftime. And in this series that dates back to 1967, Marshall has never beaten ECU in Greenville. And if ECU can convert this first down and eat these timeouts up that Marshall has, that trend will hold true. Second down and six running it again. Simmons slips out of the first tackle. Marshall takes a second timeout. Second timeout. 30 second timeout. You look at the remaining schedules for these teams. East Carolina goes to Southern Miss, goes to UAB. Those teams both down. And then closing out with UTEP. That is what you would typically say is a winnable schedule down the stretch. Marshall has a tougher road with UCF last year's East Division champ at Rice and then versus Tulsa, the two best teams in the West. There's no question. If ECU wins this ball game, they've got to feel very good about turning things around midseason. They had all the injuries, all the expectations early. They've got a much easier road down the stretch. And you have to wonder if Marshall loses this ball game, whether or not with the tough games that they have ahead, whether or not they'll fall apart, or whether or not their pride will kick in. And you know Mark Schneider, as good of a coach as he is, will be able to hold this team together. But when you lose a tough ball game, on the road with the division on the line there's still lots to play for but a lot of times young players don't go they don't realize that third down and two Simmons is stopped Marshall timeout their last 30 second timeout Carter we talked about need to step up and make plays defensive line of Marshall doing a good job of stopping up the gaps not giving any room to run CJ Spillman coming up and making a great play preventing Brandon Simmons from getting any yardage bringing up a fourth and very short I would have to think ECU would think punt at this juncture if they don't get the first down they will measure out come the sticks for a critical measurement. That short. Well, I'll tell you what. I think the call is to punt it away and let your defense that's been playing so good in the second half, particularly against the pass, put the ball game in their hands. And obviously Marshall down by seven, a field goal does him no good. So the thundering herd would have about 90 seconds needing a touchdown. Now the last 
Marshall points were on the first drive of the second half. The only touchdown drive of the game for Marshall, which ended in the can TD pass to Cody Slate. Since then, it's been three straight punts from the Marshall offense. Well, that's what Carolina does. They're first in the Conference USA in points allowed with 24 per game. They've done a very good job. Sprinting, yep, sprinting out of the timeout. East Carolina brings the punt unit on. Marshall able to get in a terrible punt from Dodge. It's out of bounds. Where did it go out? Maybe near the 40. Terrible punt by Matt Dodge. Wow. Carter, that is as big as a turnover. The ball just not hit very well. He knows it right away. He sees that it was a shank. He has to feel terrible. And look at the reaction by Mark Schneider. He knows that that's the chance that Marshall, his team, has needed. That's the great, what's great about football. One play can make a difference. We talked about eliminating the mistake. That was a huge mistake by the Pirates special teams. 15-yard punt sets up first and 10. The little hook and ladder, Darius Marshall fumbles it out of bounds. Popped by Johnson, Darius Marshall fumbles, but it trickles out. Great job by Nick Johnson coming up number 44. The ball was fumbled forward and out of bounds. It's brought in back to the spot of the fumble by Rule. Great call, great execution, but a better defensive play by Nick Johnson. But Marshall knows how close and what's on the line for them to do here. Carter, this is a very interesting last drive of this ball game. 34 yards a minute 27 before this play. They didn't even need that. Zach Slate running down the seam. Touchdown, Marshall. A PAT away from tying it. This is exactly what we talked about. When Marshall's needed to make plays throwing the football, they throw it to number 85, their go-to guy who's come up huge tonight at the earlier touchdown, and he's there again for young freshman quarterback Mark Can and the rest of this thundering herd team. Carter, remember the missed field goals and extra points early in this ball game. Had they not missed those, they would be winning this ball game, and that would have been a walk-off score, but tremendous, tremendous play offensively by the Marshall Herd. Ritanamon gets this PAT tied at 16 on a day that began with two interceptions for Mark Cannon in the first half, two touchdown passes in the second half were tied with a minute 21. Great pass by the lefty, putting the ball on the money to Slate, the tight end, who does a good job of getting behind the coverage, beating Chris Maddox, the backup linebacker, one-on-one, -on -one, right down the seam. Great call, great execution, great time and pass protection, and that's how you win ball games. You can't give up. You always have to think that there's a chance to win. And that's a beautiful thing about this sport, Carter. You're always one play away from winning or losing. And right here late, Marshall found a way to get themselves back in this ball game. Now, obviously, Mark Snyder's team takes that lesson to heart about playing till the end. Still a minute 21 now. Marshall doesn't have any timeouts. East Carolina has two. So the Pirates will get the football. And obviously, they don't need a touchdown. They need a field goal to win this game in the last minute 21 of regulation. There's no question. And if this goes into halftime, this will be the second week in a row that East Carolina has been in halftime. You remember overtime. that nail overtime, excuse me. You remember that game last week against UCF, Conference USA's best rush defense, and did such a good job running the football. But both of these teams have made errors tonight that have been costly. And right now, with the Conference USA East Division on the line, we're tied at 16 with just over a minute left. Tyler Warner kicks it away. T.J. Lee on the return for East Carolina. Tripped up and then brought down at the 23. So for the Pirates, one minute, 14 seconds left, two timeouts. And they'll have to go 77 yards to the end zone or get in field goal range. And there's an injured player on the field. Now, 
believe it's T.J. Lee, the return man, and it is. A senior out of Raleigh, North Carolina, averages 15 yards a catch and does a pretty good job for them on special teams and good job keeping his balance there. But as he comes down, his leg and ankle just gets caught up underneath the defender that brings him down and the ball squirts out late. Well, he had the, early. Big, the biggest play of the year for East Carolina on special teams. He had the punt block versus Virginia Tech to set up the game winner in the opener. So as T.J. Lee limps to the sideline, we check in with the CBS College Sports Desk. And you'll know in a moment if this one's good. High snap. Kick is on the way. It is good. 24-23, the final from Big Ten Country. Back to you. Well, we could have a potential field goal just like that here in Greenville, North Carolina. We're tied at 16, a minute 14. T.J. Lee being helped off the field. You go back to Ben Hartman, whose career long is 52. Earlier in this game, this is from 51. So the range is there for Ben Hartman in the East Carolina kicking game. He can pull that one off again. East Carolina wins it. So maybe drive it to about the 35 before you think about the game winner for Ben Hartman. He had a game winning kick to beat UCF in OT last week. Game winning kick to beat North Carolina here last year. Carter, that's only about 20, 25 yards to be able to do that. A minute 15 or 14 is plenty of time to be able to cross midfield. Pinkney pressure throws complete to Devon Drew, who crosses midfield on the first down catch and run. <laughs> we joked at the beginning of this ball game with Devon Drew and Cody Slate. Was it going to be the battle of the tight ends? Both of these guys have showed up huge tonight for their teams and have been the outlet and go-to guy for both quarterbacks. Great job by Drew on that play, moving the chains. Pinkney hands off on first down. It's Brandon Simmons. <laughs> And you're about 10 yards away from Ben Hartman's field goal range, maybe even closer, about eight yards away from Hartman's field goal range. Clock ticking. Pinkney out of the shotgun on second down. He'll roll, he'll throw, and incomplete, which stops the clock with 34 seconds left. East Carolina does have two timeouts. That's not a bad play, Carter. Brings up a... Decision though, it's a huge third down. We know how big third downs have played a role, but it may come down to a huge field goal for the East Carolina Pirates. That's the 30 yard line, 35 yard line, which would make it a 52 yard kick, which is Hartman's career long. He had a 51 yarder earlier. On third down, Pinkney completes it on the slant. First down and more as Daryl Freedy makes the grab to the 32. Great patience and protection by Pinkney to sit in the pocket and deliver the football. Daryl Freeney does a good job on the inside slant, converting the third down. Pirates are perilously close to scoring and getting into field goal range on the herd. Under 20 seconds remaining. Pinkney to the air for Drew, incomplete. Stopping the clock with 15 seconds. Now, two timeouts, 15 seconds. Do you take the shots to the end zone or do you set up a field goal? Well, I think you try and get as much yardage as you can, but you have some options there because if you throw the ball to the middle of the field, you have timeouts to be able to call. You need at least one timeout on the final play of the game so that you can get your field goal team out onto the field. But ECU's had a lot of success getting the ball to the corner and to the outside sides of the field. They've also been able to come around and throw it inside. But right now, the thundering herd has to defend the entire field because of the timeout situation. Simmons, the second down carry. Clock rolling under 10 seconds. Now East Carolina has to take a timeout with nine time ticks out. left. East Carolina, their second, 30-second timeout. Pretty conservative play call on that last one. I thought they might have tried to put the ball in the air and throw a safe route to eat up a bigger chunk of yardage. Now you're in a third and five situation. 
The if ball's you, on the 26, and you'd certainly like to not test all of the leg of your kicker and get a little bit closer. If you kick from right here, it's a 43-yarder. And usually in this situation, you don't look much at down, but this is third down. So if you run it on third down, take that second time out, you're kicking on fourth down with virtually no time on the clock. What an incredible ball game this has been. ECU rushing up to the line of scrimmage. Third down, Pinkney keeps it. He takes a knee. They'll set up for the game-winning kick. Clock ticking down, and there's Skip holds his timeout. He time out. set that up with East the officiating Carolina. crew. Their last 30-second timeout. So with three seconds left, it's going to come down to a Ben Hartman kick to whether East Carolina wins it or whether we go to overtime. <laughs> what do you think oh, Skip Holtz is saying to Ben Hartman right now? Well, this would be a 43-yard kick right from the middle of the field. He's already made a 51-yarder just a week ago. He had the game-winning kick versus UCF. Neither team has a timeout, so Marshall can't ice Ben Hartman here. It's just see. lining up. Snap it, hold it, kick it. You saw that big smile on Skip Holtz's face. One of the ways that he tries to relax his kickers is they, they make them exchange jokes. Skip tells Ben Hartman a joke and Ben tells Skip a joke. That's the way that they try and relax because there's no question the Conference USA Championship is on the line with this kick. 42-yard kick from Hartman is no good. No good. We're going to overtime. The 42-yard kick is just wide left. This was it for the Conference USA Championship. A walk-off field goal. Ben Hartman just sends it out left. Had the huge field goal earlier in the game. As you see Marshall run off the field knowing that they have been breathed into the life of a second chance. ECU missing a tremendous opportunity, but this game is not over. ECU's defense has been playing very well, and it's going to come down to who can play the most consistent football, establish a run game, and not make a mistake in overtime. This is the second week in a row that ECU has been in overtime, which I think is an advantage to them because they have the confidence of being able to remember back to last week when they found a way to win. And of course, in every situation like this, Ben Hartman getting consolation from his teammates. He knows and they know, hey, you just missed the 42-yarder, but we're going to overtime. He's likely going to have a chance to kick with the game on the line again. There's no question he is, and there's no question that this Marshall team is feeling pretty dang good about their ability to come on a road to a place they've never played with so much on the line and still be in this thing and take it to overtime. They struggled Gentlemen, throwing the football early in this game, but now found a way to overtime. get right back in it. Each team has one timeout. I will flip the coin. This is tails. That is heads. The winner must choose an option. What is the call, Marshall? He's calling tails. It's heads. You want defense? Which end we plan this? You want to go that way? Marshall will take the ball at the 25-yard line. First down. 16 all at the end of regulation. Overtime is next. At a sold-out Dowdy Ficklin Stadium in Greenville, North Carolina, we're headed to overtime. 16 all between Marshall and East Carolina. Think of the overtime essentially as like a baseball inning. There's a top. And there's a bottom half. Offense starts at the opponent's 25-yard line. Critical coin toss there favoring East Carolina. They play defense first. Meaning that when East Carolina gets the football, they'll know whether they need a field goal or a touchdown to try and win the game or tie it. 
This would be a monumental win for Mark Snyder and his Marshall program. There's no question, Carter. He took over a program that was hurt and didn't have full scholarships. And to be able to win on the road against a formidable opponent and sit in first place in the Conference USA Eastern Division would be huge not only for the season but for this program. Young people around the country looking at what Marshall's doing. This would be a statement game for the Thundering Herd. Screen on first down and 10. The toss back to Can is batted down. Zach Slate gets a hand on it. They toss it to Milligan, who tries to toss back to Can. Creative play by the Thundering Herd, but Zach Slate is all over it. In overtime, I guess you find yourself in this ball game. All bets are off, and you go to whatever it is you want to do. But a throwback pass to Mark Ham, that's one way to move the football through the air, but didn't work and fool the Pirates at all on that one. Second down and 10. Cam, the more conventional pass on second down, completing it to Chubb Small out of the backfield. Remember last Sunday at Orlando. By the way, that pass is ruled incomplete, so it's third down and 10. Last Sunday at Orlando, overtime, East Carolina got a turnover to start the overtime and then kick the game-winning field goal. And it was Emmanuel Davis, the young freshman that came up and made that tremendous play and has showed up all tonight, but it's been this ECU defense that has done such a good job of keeping them in this ball game. Huge third down. Marshall desperately needs and is more than capable of making. Slate brings the pressure. Knox can as he throws it incomplete on third down. Meaning Marshall will have to attempt a 42-yard field goal. Carter, great players make great plays and great games, and Zach Slade is one of those. Gets to Mark Can beating the offensive tackle, the young freshman C.J. Wood to get around the edge and hit Can just as he throws for the incomplete. Now putting a lot of pressure on Craig Ratanamron, who's got to kick this field goal. And how about this? It's Tyler Warner who comes out for the attempt. It's not Rattanamorn, it's Warner. And his kick is no good. The 42-yarder, no good. Tyler Warner comes out for the kick instead of Craig Rattanamorn, who had missed a 26-yarder in a PAT. Another mistake by this thundering herd special teams. Another missed kick. Something that has plagued them throughout this whole game. You can ill afford to not be able to convert those plays, especially with the way ECU's offense has been moving the football. But Carter, make no mistake about it, a field goal isn't good. They need to punch this ball in and not put the pressure on the kicking game. Pinkney throwing it on first down. It's Dwayne Harris with room to run on the screen. And Harris inside the 15. Move the chains on the screen from Pinkney to Harris. That's what Harris talked about. He wanted the ball in his hands. That's the second time that they've gone to that play out the flat on the quick screen. He's such a tremendous playmaker. Does a great job of beating the coverage, making the thundering her defense missed tackles in the open field and right now the Pirates have to feel very good and confident and know that they are 12 yards away from sitting atop the Conference USA Eastern Division. Remember all East Carolina needs is a field goal. So Pinkney handing off to Whitley on first down. He picks up a couple. Last Sunday this has been Hartman in overtime against UCF. The game winner to lead the comeback win, a 13 to 10 overtime win in Central Florida. Hartman will have another chance to win in an overtime if his teammates can hang on to the football. That's the only thing that was separating the Pirates from a game winning kick. Well, they're close, and sometimes the tendency is to feel good that you have the game in the bag and there's a letdown, but that big offensive line needs to move the pile and get this first down. Whitley leans forward. He'll get to the eight, bring it up third down. Now, 
The thinking changes here between coaches as to whether you snap it and kick it on third down just in case you have a bad snap or whether you run it to the middle of the field on third down to set up the fourth down kick. My guess is they're going to run the football. They've done a relatively good job of protecting it, except for that one Whitley fumble that they had on the screen pass. But with the way that they've been able to run the football late in this ball game, and with Norman Whitley back there, my guess is is they're going to do exactly this, and Pinkney's going to get to the middle of the field. Well, going back to last season, Ben Hartman game-winning kicks against North Carolina, against Boise State and Hawaii in the bowl game. Then last week, the game-winning kick versus UCF. At the end of regulation, he had a 42-yarder that was no good. Now, we said that Coach Holtz and Hartman would exchange jokes. Do you think they've ever had to go too deep into their joke bag? They did it last year against North Carolina, I know, and Butch Davis tried to ice him. 27-yard field goal for the win in OT. And speaking of icing. Michael, time out. And Their here ass. you take a look at Coach seconds. Holtz. Time out. Coach Holtz walking out to talk to. He's going to have to go ben three Hartman. deep. <laughs> He's going to have to call his dad Lou to get another one from the banquet circuit. And I tell you what, Coach. Marshall, of course, Skip Holtz, the son of Lou. And Aaron Taylor, my broadcast partner, Lombardi Award winner. And Greg Hudson, the defensive coordinator from the Pirates, was a GA for the offensive line when I was there as well. So anyway, you cut this up. There's a lot of Notre Dame ties. and. Both coaching staffs would feel very good with Rick Minter for Marshall and Skip Holtz and Greg Hudson for the job that they've done for their teams. But let's see just how good that joke was that Ben Hartman told. For the game winning 27 yarder. Spot on. East Carolina wins it for the second straight week. It's an overtime win for the East Carolina Pirates. play alone atop Conference USA's Eastern Division. After he missed a 42-yarder at the end of regulation, Ben Hartman is the hero in overtime. The fourth game-winning kick of his Pirate career. Direct TV player of the game. It was Emmanuel Davis who had those two interceptions, the first two drives of the game, and he had six key tackles in the game as well. Tremendous. Last week, he, of course, had that big interception in overtime, but Emmanuel Davis showed up, and what a tremendous player that this guy is. And for the Pirates fans out there, at the beginning of the year, ECU on its two deep had one redshirt freshman, but due to injuries, there are now eight to nine redshirt freshmen that are on that two deep. There are a lot of young players that are getting experience. Without question, Skip Holtz has the pulse of this program, and it is getting better. East Congrats. Carolina is a competitive football team. Our Wrangler five-star play of the game. Is there any question what the Wrangler five-star play of the game is? The game-winning field goal from Ben Hartman. Great job by Hartman to redeem himself. He missed the field goal at the end of regulation, but great job staying heady, staying poised, and digging deep into his joke book to find whatever it took <laughs> to make it when it counted. This ECU team desperately needed this win, and they deserved it. The SEC postgame show is coming up next. Ben Hartman is the hero with the game-winning kick. 1916 East Carolina wins it in overtime. Remember, coming up next, it is the SEC postgame show presented by Geico. For the latest scores, news, highlights, and analysis, log on to cbssports.com slash CBS College. For Aaron Taylor, producer Seller Shy, director Jim Cornell, statistician Don Bajola, and our entire CBS College Sports crew, I'm Carter Blackburn. Ben Hartman's game-winning kick wins it in OT, 1916. This has been a presentation of CBS College Sports, the pulse of college sports.